Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, so today we're going to be making a chuck back plate to fit on this new Victoria dividing head that uh, I recently acquired. Um, this is, I believe, a 10 inch dividing head. It's got the banjo to run spiral and helical indexing with the gears accompanying it. Um, this, can, this is a universal dividing head. This is 40 to 1. You can tilt it at uh, angles in this direction. It's got two plates for the indexing head. Um, takes a Morse taper four in the spindle and it's got a two inch ten spindle nose and I didn't have any chucks that fit that size so I was taking a six inch chuck which I had the six inch three jaw buck chuck and it's a centered true chuck so you can actually indicate it to be on center and what we're going to do is we're going to adapt this chuck to fit this spindle and right now um, this has um, this is actually the finished product but this had a inch and a half eight thread pitch spindle and that was off a nine inch south bend and this chuck I noticed was cracked when I made the adapter for it and so I figured I didn't want to use it on the lathe at high speed applications so I figured I'd just bore it out and bore it to be the size for this because this is really low speed applications and I'm not worried at all about the area of the crack for this, op this, uh, for this application for this dividing head. So a little more about the dividing head, this is a Victoria or an Elliott, uh, they're both more or less the same company. It's a 40 to 1 dividing head and it's roughly from about the 1950s. We have a manual for it with all the indexing um, information for helical turning and for worm gear making, as well as just plain and direct indexing. Uh, it's a really cool indexing head and I look forward to setting it up on the Enduma here behind me and uh, we could get the horizontal mill to cut some spirals for the first time. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so here guys, this is the spindle nose on this machine, and this is a 2 inch 10, and I found that out by measuring the outside diameter, taking a thread pitch gauge with a number 10 TPI, and found that that lined up perfectly. So from there, I was able to go over to the machinery's handbook, find 2 inch 10, and come over to the table for the inside diameter for internal threading. And that number we needed to be for the bore is 1.892 inches for the ID and from there we'll, we'll get the bore sized up on this uh, this back plate and uh, we'll, what we'll do from there is thread it to size to get it up to the two inch and I'll show you that set up on the lathe we'll use the four jaw to get this back plate indicated in then we'll take some cuts to get the bore to the right diameter and then we'll do threading. Hey guys, so here we are. We got the back plate mounted in the four jaw. We're going to indicate it in. I got the one inch travel indicator set up there with the Noga. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try and get that to run under a thousandth run out. Right now we're starting with about 150 thou run out. total and come over and find the high spot which is right there we're going to tighten we're about three thou out right now they our high we're hovering just at a thou Try and clean that up a little bit. Right there. 
about half a thou now. Now it looks like we're running about dead nuts. Okay, now we're going to do the face run out. Come and find our high spot. It's right about in this area. Come and tap. And our spot again. Now we're then two. And our high in that area. Still within two. too much. Yeah, that's pretty lucky. Right on the dot there. Now let's check our uh, OD again. Bring this over. Let's see where we're at. We're still running dead nuts there, so that's pretty good. So we got this thing indicated in where we want to be, now we can start cutting. Okay guys, now we're going to start taking cuts. We got to get this uh, inside diameter up to 1.892, and that is the uh, minor diameter for a 2 inch 10 spindle for the dividing head I'm making this back plate for. So we're going to get started, we're going to set our zero once we take a first cut, see how far we got to go. Delayed running at 630 RPM. I got the WNMG boring bar on here, uh, made by Kenna Metal. And we're going to come in and touch off on the inside diameter of this. We're going to take our first pass. We'll just take uh, 20 for the hell of it. And we're power feeding. I got a carriage stop set so I don't run into the uh, truck and all, so uh, it'll disengage the power feed when I'm done with the cut. take a measurement. Okay, so we got about 460 thousandths to go, so I'm going to take these in 100 thou passes.
300, 300 total now. Shut it off. We're going to take a measurement. We should have about 160 to go. And I'm going to come in and take a measurement. We've got, yeah, roughly 170 thousandths to go. So we'll take another 150 and then we'll start measuring from there. threading this two inch 10. I did a scratch pass just to see where that we're cutting 10 threads per inch and I got our thread pitch gauge here and we line up perfectly on each of the hash marks. I got the threading tool in the, in the tool post. We're going to try and turn this um, out to two inch so we can get the two inch 10 threads and uh, let's get started. Okay guys, so here's the finished back plate, and this is 2 inch 10, and see if we can get that to focus in there for you, so you can see the threads, and those are the finished threads off the lathe using a carbide insert boring bar. We're going to test this out on the spindle, and this, these are right hand threads by the way, but we're going to get this to thread on, and the threads are really crisp 
and they're nice and tight. There's virtually no play in this back plate whatsoever. It threads right up to the back of the, the face gland on the back of the dividing head. And then from there we can mount this three jaw chuck onto this back plate. I'm really happy with the threads and how they came out. And uh, I'll mount the chuck up on there and show you guys it in the closing of the video. Okay guys, so I got a dowel pin here in the three jaw and this is a Accu adjust three, three jaw. So I could adjust the back plate with the chuck and I've got it dialed in now and I have absolutely zero movement on that indicator. And yes, we are preloaded and I got it set there at, let me set it to zero just for reference. And now we'll turn around and there's absolutely no movement in that finger whatsoever. So we got this chuck running perfectly true back plate's working like it should and I'm really happy with the results so now we can get started using this thing okay guys we got this all done we got the chuck mounted up here on the back plate for the spindle for this dividing head everything fits real nice uh, the threads meet nice there's no galling or anything and this spins real nice and true still um, I'm really looking forward to getting this dividing set up and learning a little bit more about uh, helical indexing because it's something I've never had the opportunity to do before. I've done a bunch of direct indexing and plain indexing uh, for random gears, spur gears, and bevel gears, but uh, really want to get set up to do some worm gears and some helical gears. Because that's uh, stuff not many people cover on YouTube and not many people have knowledge of anymore, and I'd like to learn it myself. I have a, an old machinery book I've been reading up on to try and learn the math that goes into calculating these helical gear curves. and. Uh, with that, I guess this will be a wrap for that video. For this video, um, this chuck's all mounted up, and I can't wait to get to work with it. It's nice as this chuck has the reversible jaws, so I could do uh, inside grabbing, outside grabbing, flip the jaws around using that orientation. Um, I could also offset the chuck if I need to to do like an oval shape, which I don't think I'll have to do, but it's nice to have the ability to do that. Uh, but now that's this will make that the, this dividing head usable, so we can actually hold work with it. Other than the Morse Taper 4 that was in it before, I didn't really have anything else to use this for, uh, use this with, so I'm glad to now be able to use this. Um, if you like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe to my channel, and uh, I guess I'll catch you guys on the next video.